<laughs> for those of y'all that weren't here last time and the the last scripture that i wanted to to go to and i couldn't find it my dogs had eaten some of my oh pages my i had a new bible and it's giant print i highly oh, recommend that <laughs> <laughs> I, I was so excited when i opened that one um many of y'all know i have worked for attorneys uh, for 20 years and to find an attorney who is a Republican, it's, it's, it's hard. There are, you know, a minuscule amount, but uh, y'all know we have held fundraisers for the Obamas, for Hillary Clinton, uh, Kamala was here three weeks ago, three, only two months ago, a few weeks ago. Your um, turn, Jeff? Yeah. Um, we are recording. Um, yeah, I got a lot of phone calls last week when AL.com reported who the highest contributor to the Harris campaign was, and it was one of my partners, and then, like, number five was one of the other partners. So, <laughs> I, um, I walked in Courtney's office Monday and I looked him dead in the eye and I said, the spirit of the living God says there's going to be riots and chaos in Chicago. And I said, I am asking you to reconsider going. And he laughed at me. And he said, I'll, I'll think about it. And I, and I said, Courtney, Kamala is going to be betrayed. Well, that registered. And when she does not get this domination, and she's not, the Lord is going to to send him to me to say, what else do you know? <laughs> um, I, um, I have to, y'all, I mean, that letter of resignation from the ticket from the Biden it was not on presidential stationery. It it was released on X. Um, and rest assured, Obama knew nothing about it because he he was caught by surprise. He didn't endorse her for days. And just because these people and these delegates have verbally endorsed her does not mean she's got that nomination. They're going to put whoever they think can beat Trump on the ticket, and it is not her, regardless of what the polls are saying. Because, you know, the media does lie. I know y'all find that hard to believe. I don't know. Uh, um, there is um, there is a a word from the Lord that her campaign will be sabotaged, and it is some by someone who is close to her. And there is also someone very close to President Trump, who is trying to do the same. Is trying to get him killed, and we have to stand against this. I, um, you know, Richard Grunt has told me, uh, I've, t I've told Richard many times, I have no business in ministry because I have no mercy. And I told the Lord the other night, I said, whoever this mole is, I said, either radically save them or just let them drop dead, okay? Let's just, <laughs> let's get this over with. Um, but I know it's somebody very close, just like King David. Now, I am not making an accusation because the scriptures do not support it, but I am stating a fact. Every time that Saul found David to try and kill him, who was the one person that knew where David was? Jonathan. His sworn, his sworn brother. It was Jonathan. But anyway. Uh, last, let's see, since we met, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu addressed Congress. I hope y'all got to see that speech. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. And when he was here, uh, you know, the vice president didn't have time to meet with him. And I reminded my brother, I said, you know, back in 98, Bill Clinton was supposed to have lunch with Baby, and he refused because Netanyahu was not going to be strong-armed. He wouldn't do what Clinton wanted. So. Clinton refused to have lunch with him. So Benjamin Netanyahu got back on a plane, flew back to Tel Aviv, and mid-flight, the Monica Lewinsky story broke. How about that? 
Well, the other day I'm talking to my brother and we were discussing how uh, it was known that Kamala Harris's husband had had an affair, but the Daily Mail broke the story that it wasn't just an affair. He had an affair with the babysitter and got her pregnant. And I, um, I got so tickled because my brother said, well, my sister would say that uh, people don't mess with Benjamin Netanyahu. And all I could say was, touche. <laughs> he, 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 I got one up by my own brother. <laughs> um, lot, lots ha a lot has happened since we met last month. Um, do you remember when we talked about the stock market, how it was shorted the day before the, I mean, the Friday before, clo closing before the assassination attempt. And I told you there had been record shorts. This is when you sell a stock before you have bought it and you're betting, that's all the stock market is, is legalized gambling. You're betting that you can buy it at a lower price. Well, some sleuth on the media, on not the news media, but on, on the internet, found that, uh, you, you'll know who this is, the uh, Austin Private Financial Group. It seemed that they shorted 12 million shares of Trump media wow. and tech group. They own Truth Social. And that went public and they came out and claimed that it was a clerical error by their brokerage and that it was only a $10,000 order. And NASDAQ backed that trade up. So you have to wonder, how did that happen? If it had been anybody else, that trade would have stood mistake or no mistake. So I had to dig a little bit to find out who owns the Austin Private Financial Group. BlackRock. And they are, of course, the world's largest money managers. They hold over $11 trillion in assets combined with Vanguard and State Street. They're, what, $25, $26 trillion, trillion dollars, girls. Did I say $11 trillion for BlackRock or billion? I mean, you're getting in so many zeros, it's ridiculous. But um, these people... They, they, run the, they run the stock market, they run the world. When you are controlling that much money, you run the world. They're, they are this, this is elitist group. Um, all right, before we get to the next story, does everybody in here understand what a server is, a computer server? Okay. Um, back in 2016, when the D, this time of the year, when the DNC was hacked, and Hillary Clinton's emails and John Podesta's emails, they were all released. Um, there was a cybersecurity firm that were given the servers that belonged to the DNC for them to investigate. And they came back and said that it was a hacking group from Russia who did it. And immediately, Julian Assange said, no, they didn't. He knew who did it. He still knows who did it. But um, this was... Um, the cybersecurity group that investigated the DNC was a company called CrowdStrike. <laughs> Sound familiar? Okay. Um, the largest outage, the largest IT outage in history was allegedly triggered by a botched security update. Uh, they are a a security firm that is supposed to prevent outages and not cause them. Y'all know this, this set down uh, airlines, banks, gas stations, uh, FedEx, uh, trains, any kind of mode of transportation. And as I, as I typed this Monday night, I said, uh, if I were guessing, I would say this is a dry run just like COVID uh, in order to shut down the election come November. I typed that on Monday night. Tuesday morning, I woke up and Perry Stone had posted an emergency uh, YouTube. And he said that 
he has a, a source. Perry's got a lot of sources. He has a source that can go to the dark web. And this man was aware that there was a warning that had been posted July the 5th. And he said, do not travel on July the 19th, that there was going to be an outage. And he nailed it. And that just so happened to be the day after the Republican National Convention broke so nobody could go home. The source who Perry did not name, of course, they are now warning that the next target in the crosshairs is our power grid. And he says that it's with the intention to stop the election and that it is most likely China. Now, you would ask, why would China do that? Every prophet that I know and trust and some that I don't, have said that China is going to attack Taiwan. The Lord said the other day, I think it was Julie Green or Brother Dixon that spoke and said, your enemies are at your shores. Taiwan is nothing but a stationary uh, aircraft carrier. That's all Taiwan is, but it's coming. And when you think about if that's their plan, uh, they want to stop this election to keep Biden where he is because there's no leadership that they own him and his puppet master. But um, y'all want to hear a very interesting fact about CrowdStrike? They are based in little old Austin, Texas. What are the odds that Austin Private Financial Group and CrowdStrike are in the same city? I bet the same odds as, as Obama and, and uh, Hillary Clinton's chef drowning. How about that? Those are good odds. <laughs> um, I have warned y'all that uh, there are going to be terrorist attacks, lockdowns, viruses, outages, shortages. It's already started. Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, has gone public and warned that there is a virus that is coming. Brother Dixon had prophesied this. He said they're going to put it on our money. That is with purpose. Um, they want to do away with, with currency. Uh, I was in TJ Maxx and Home Goods about three weeks ago, and they didn't have enough merchandise for their shelf space. Then last Friday, I ran to Walmart after work and you know the stocks the shelves are stocked on Friday afternoon because Saturday morning it's going to hit. Walmart had shelf space that was empty. The Lord has said, so what does that mean? It means that there's there's logistics problems, there's supply problems. Um the Lord had spoken this week and he said that he is a part of this, that they were poisoning our food and that he shortstopped it. And he reminded us that he is the God of multiplication. So there's no need for you to worry. My favorite news this week was um, the Lord had prophesied that um, he was going to destroy the squad. We got two down and two to go. Let's see. I have, uh, let's see. Corey Bush and Jamal Brown lost their primaries thanks to a super PAC pouring millions of dollars into their opponent's campaign. And the name of that PAC is the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know if it was before the camera was on or not. Uh, Amanda Grace, Sandy, was, you were talking about that. Amanda Grace has prophesied that all five of the boroughs in New York are going to go red, which tells me the election will go on and Trump will be reelected. AOC is going to lose. Um, and then Ilhan Omar, uh, she is facing, believe it or not, a Republican Iraqi refugee is her opponent in uh, Milwaukee. It's Dahlia al-Aqida. So we want to uh, send them some money. That's, um, 
we got to get them gone. Well, the Lord's got them gone. But I'm so thankful to that pack. So, let's see, what else? A year ago, my youngest partner was in my office, and I don't even know what we were talking about. And I was telling him that, you know, a year from now, I was going to, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, a year from now, we're going to see things that we can't imagine. And I'm thinking a year, and what came out of my mouth was 10 months from now. And when I said it, I was like, I didn't say that. The Lord said that. I knew it was prophetic. So I went home, and I, I marked the date. I calendared it. And it's day after tomorrow. It's August the 17th. Y'all, uh, that is just, we. that is 80 days from the election. And we have, we've got to prepare for chaos. There's going to, you know, they're going to try and create more global cyber issues. I mean, we the, the guy on the dark web says it's China. Uh, we're not going to limit that to just them. Now is not a time, Susan Bell, now is not a time to travel. <laughs> um, now is not a time to start any kind of a project. Now is the time to fast and pray and to be still before the Lord. They're going to throw everything at us before the election and after the election. Uh, I was listening to General Flynn this morning, and I had I had such I, I was so proud. I was so proud of myself. Um, Back in 2017, when Q started posting, and uh, who was it in our class that uh, called me, Scale, and she said, Peggy, there's a guy posting on the internet, and she said, you need to, you need to look at these posts, and I said, why? And she said, this guy is saying, almost word for word, what you have taught us, that there's a 16-year plan to destroy this nation, Obama will survey of it, he will destroy our economy, our military, and then Hillary will back clean up and she will surrender the sovereignty of this nation. She said, he's posting this stuff. General Flynn said almost word for word that this morning. And he also said, y'all better be ready for an October surprise. Pray it's not a red October. China could attack Taiwan then. They could, um, I, I look for, you know, if Biden is on his way out, there is an executive order that he signed three years ago, 2021. Uh, it is executive order 14067. And it's 11 pages. Y'all can go and read it for yourself, but it is the outline of the installation of digital currency. It's already in place. Nobody knows about this. Uh, the, you know, they, they want the digital currency. They want war, but it is not the time. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel is, uh, this is, yeah, uh, verse 25. And he's talking about the beast, and he said, He shall speak great words against the Most High, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change, not time, singular. He will think to change times and laws. The enemy is trying to steal time. Do y'all remember when President Obama, he made a comment after his presidency, I don't remember who was interviewing him, and he said, I think we were just before our time. And I was like, you're right. You're absolutely right. And the Lord spoke last week, and he said, there are presidencies, plural, that were stolen. The elections were stolen. And everything that these alleged presidents, these false presidents have installed and made into laws, he's going to reverse it. Mm 
That includes the appointments to the Supreme Court. So I'm looking for Jackson and Cagle and so Mark, so, Sotomayor, they're gone. It's going to be a lot of turnover. But it's, it's time for the Lord to move. He, um, he mentioned this week that he is going to silence the Internet. He is going to destroy Facebook, uh, Instagram. What are some of those other social TikTok. media? Uh, yeah, TikTok. Um, and he's going after uh, Google, but he's going after Microsoft. Because he, uh, he prophesied this this week. There were Microsoft servers. Bill Gates did this. There were Microsoft servers that were created to provide a secure communications line with all of these treasonous employees in our nation and, and their global handlers. Everything. Every text, every email, every Zoom call, every, all the evidence is in one place. And how convenient Julian Assange is out of prison now. <laughs> yeah, if I were Trump, there you go, that's my man. It's coming, y'all. All of the evidence they need to convict these people of their treasonous acts is there. It's all in one place. And I have heard Hank Kuhneman prophesied for years. I have heard this man say it 10 times. There's going to be a thumb drive to start it all. There's going to be one little thumb drive, and it's going to start it all and bring down everybody. we got some things to look forward to. Now, and I think that's everything about it in the, in the news. Uh, I know y'all cannot fathom what I'm about to talk about now. The Olympic ceremony. Here, Sandy, pass these out. I apologize. My work schedule has been. Uh, this is all I could do this week, y'all. And I, I finished this lesson uh, at 12.30 last night. Uh, I know a lot of y'all know a lot of this. We're going to talk about some stuff that y'all don't know. This was the, the picture that I'm handing you now, and I'll show it to our viewing audience. And of course, we'll probably get flagged for copywriting. <laughs> um, this was not from the Olympic site. This was a post on Instagram by this woman right here that's in the middle. She posted this. She goes by the name Barbara. She is a lesbian. She goes by the name Barbara Butch. Butched. Butched. And they're trying, the, the Olympic Committee is trying to deny that this was not a mockery of the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> but she posted this side-by-side -side comparison. And <clears throat> her text or whatever it is she does on Instagram or post, her post said, the new gay testament. And it was up about that long, and they, the Olympic Committee told her to take it down. They have had to remove the opening ceremonies from their website because this man right here, over here in the black, it seems that on national, te or excuse me, global television, his genitalia was hanging out. Okay. What was it? His privates. Uh, now, uh, Rabbi Khan has deemed this the global drag show. And Jonathan posted a really in-depth uh, mystery. That's what Jonathan calls them, a, a mystery about this. And uh, if you have time, go and, go and watch it. But this is, this is just the start, okay? The opening ceremonies, they mock the Most High God. When they viewed the uh, the audience, and if I didn't have a job, we would have this great PowerPoint, and y'all could sit and have handouts. But um, when the orchestra came on, for no reason, there was a golden bull's head at, at the orchestra pit. Okay? Um, then there was the 
uh, white horse that was, uh, there was, it was a mechanical horse that was riding through the, the river and through the streets of Paris. And then when it came into the stadium, it was a rider on a white horse. So let's, uh, let's go to Revelation 6. Now, if you look on the internet, you may have a hard time finding it, but there is a uh, one shot of the rider on the white horse who was allegedly a descendant of Joan of Arc. But I would have thought if they wanted to represent Joan of Arc, it would have been a woman. But this was a man on a white horse. He had the Olympic flag with the rings. It was over his, the, the blanket was over the horse. But from the camera's perspective, all you could see was on a white, white flag, a red, a red ring, a black ring, and a green ring. Ooh. Revelation 6. And when I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, I heard, and it was like noise of thunder, when one of the four beasts said, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, I saw a white horse, and on him sat one who had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. For there was another horse that was red, and power was given to him, and he sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. When they opened the third seal, he said, Come and see, and behold, I saw a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see, thou don't hurt the oil and the wine. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the four beasts say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, I saw a pale horse. Pale, in the translation, it's, uh, it, it's green. It's green. So the Olympic Committee has got a man riding on a white horse with a white flag that has got each color, green, red, black, Girls, there is not a Muslim country in the in the world that doesn't have three out of four of those colors on their flag. And the man that comes riding a white horse in the Quran, his name is the Mahdi, and he is the Islamic savior. And if uh, we've done a comparison before, maybe we need to go back and revisit. It's the same guy. When uh, Walid Shubat was saved back in the '90s, he was a terrorist. And he knew the Quran backwards and forwards, and he was saved, and he started studying the Bible, and he got to Revelation and went, wait a minute, I know this guy. Same guy. And the Olympic Committee has just promoted this and promoted this. Um, the only thing that was worse than the opening ceremony was the closing ceremony. And there was this gold shiny creature and he came out of the sky and on the on the field it was like a relief of the continents so he is coming to earth wow that sounds familiar Luke 10 Luke 10 verse 10 Luke ten eighteen, And behold, Satan fell as lightning from the heaven. This creature, uh, the Olympic Committee portrayed him. All you could see was him. The rest of the people were just gray and, and no faces. And they came and they lifted him up and they worshipped him. And remember what, I, what Daniel wrote about he came to change times and season? When he went up, it was on a clock. 
it was this round thing and you could you could obviously tell it was a clock and then when uh when this is all going on they are playing the hymn of apollo revelation 9 This is verse 1. This is the fifth trumpet. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth. There you go. <laughs> and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. I don't necessarily think that um, it's a physical key. I think it's probably um, revelation, technology, um, knowledge of knowing how to open the pit where do i think the pit is i think the pit is cern because cern that hadrian collider in switzerland is built on the temple of apollo and they have made no means about it that they are trying to open that door to another dimension uh the the physicist um the particle physicist of uh, uh dr hawking he warned him before he died. He said, you don't want to do that. It's not what, you know, there's no telling what's going to come through that. Now let's go back to, uh, yeah, all right. Now let's go to verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollo, Apollyon. This closing ceremony was all about the worship of Apollo. Apollo, uh, you know, being, uniting the world. Um, when the horse, when the white horse came in at the opening ceremonies, it was the first, the, the, the metallic horse, the, the, what do you call it? The mechanical horse had seen it first. But when he came into the stadium, it was a man riding on a white horse and all of the nations, the flags, were following him. How much more obvious could they have been? Now, Apollo is the sun god. This is, um, think about after after the flood, okay, this, this is, there's stories all around the world about the same guy with different names. He is um, uh, Nimrod in Hebrew, Apollyon, Apollo in Greek, um, Gilgamesh in Babylonian, um, what's his Egyptian name? Osiris is his Egyptian name. Uh, the Aztecs call him Kuku Khan. The, um, the, what's the other, uh, in, in, indigenous tribe in Mexico, they call him, uh, Mayans. the Mayans, they call him, uh, Quetzalcoatl. It's the same guy, the hunter, the, all these stories, it's the same guy, different names after the flood, but they're trying to bring him back. They're trying to resurrect him. Now... They're not the only ones that are trying to resurrect them. It's the dollar beer. Dollar bill. Dollar bill. We studied this in years ago. There is um, uh, President, Ro I think it was Roosevelt that issued the redesign of the one dollar bill. And over here on this side is the pyramid with the all-seeing eye and there are 13 rows on the pyramid okay 12 to god is government it's order 13 is chaos then you have if you count the stones there are 72 stones that make up this pyramid and Let's uh, let's just go to let's talk about the number seventy-two. I want to go to Exodus twenty-two. 
And I cannot wait to sit at the feet of Jesus and let him explain every jot, every tittle, everything that is in this book that we are so unaware of. Exodus 22 is the 72nd chapter in the Bible. 72 is 6 plus 6 times 6. There's your 666. All right? Verse 18. The number 18 is what? 6 plus 6 plus 6. And do y'all know what this verse says? Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Do you remember when President Obama, he took office and he said, I'm going to do a hundred days worth of work in 72. And then I'm going to rest on the 73rd. And that told me right then he was a practicing witch. Mm -hmm. But the church is so oblivious to spiritual warfare, they don't see it. Now, let's, let's go back to this right here. This is, um, this all-seeing eye. This is, this is the, uh, the eye of Horus, but down here at the bottom it says, and I'm going to butcher this, it's Latin, Novus Ordo Seclorum. And I learned all this from Tom Horn, God rest his soul. Y'all ever want to learn anything about, uh, the dollar bill, I highly recommend you read his books, but because trust me, I'm just, I'm hitting the, this, the, the iceberg and the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, that means in Latin, the new order of the ages and the, uh, the up at, up at the top where it says Anuit Capotis, it's 13 letters and this is a representation of it's calling forth for Osiris. The Olympics is calling forth for Osiris. Our own currency is calling forth for Osiris. When every president is sworn in, where he is on, on the mall, he is facing the Washington Monument, which is nothing but the phallic symbol of Nimrod, Osiris, Apollo. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, just beyond that, is the Masonic Temple. And every year, every four years, when there are, when there's a new president sworn in, those men stand and, and by the way, there are like 13 columns on the White House. These numbers are just all over Washington. But these men, these, these Masons stand and they face the, in, the, the swearing in of the president and they call forth for Osiris to go and to, and to enter into who is being sworn in as the president. It's all calling forth Antichrist. Antichrist. Uh, I, I promised myself I was not going to go over today because I kept y'all way too long last time. Um, this is, and and I, I wish, I wish I had, uh, I have moved. I know it's upstairs in the attic in a box somewhere. But this is the lesson that I did 2016 on the Olympic ceremony. And the title of it is Raising Osiris. It is just year after year after year. Um, I, I, I can't go into all this. I, let me find the handouts for this and we will go back through this lesson next time. Y'all need to be aware of this stuff. Um, who remembers the opening ceremonies at the London Games? Okay, that, that stadium was built and it was the design of the stadium. It had 13 um, pyramids all the way around the stadium and it had the all-seeing eye in every one of them. 
That design was taken out of a spell casting book at Yale University. And the, um, it was the weirdest thing I had ever seen. I, uh, Lynn Briggs her, said that her son called her and said, Mama, this is the weirdest stuff I've ever seen in my life. They were allegedly celebrating uh, National Health Services. Now, I don't understand why they were celebrating National Health Services when this was a global event. But they had all of the buildings in London lit up with, you know, N NHS. And when they went into the, the field for the opening ceremonies, they were pushing hospital beds. And all of these women were dressed in, in uh, uh, nursing outfits. And there were children that were jumping in the bed. And this horrible black figure came up and he looked like the Grim Reaper and he didn't have a sickle. He had this thing and it looked like a needle, a syringe. Ooh. Folks, that was, that was just the precursor of COVID. They are letting you know it's like everything that um, God does, which I do, you know, he doesn't do anything unless he first tells his prophets who tells us. Okay. It's like the, it's like a universal law and the enemy is telling this is what we're going to do. God going to do that. Well, this is what we're going to do. And the church is blind. They have no idea what we are being subjected to through that box on that wall. Thirteen is the number of, of chaos. It's coming. It's coming more so than we can imagine. The Lord spoke this week, and he said, they're going to poison your drinking water in some part of the nation. In what part of the nation? Some part some part of the nation. Those terrorists that, th that have come across our border, just like us, they are for such a time as this. The Lord has spoken and said, they want World War III, I'm not gonna let them have it. It's not time. The terrorist attacks they've got planned, there will be some that are gonna be carried out, but he's gonna short stop it. He's going to shortstop what they have planned, all they have planned. How does he shortstop it? Our prayers. Okay? And if there is a warning issued in Birmingham, we have one, one water source in, that, in Alabama, it's the Cobb River. And I want you all to know that if um, there is a warning issued, over our water, you do not go and say, oh Lord, please let this be safe for me to drink. No. You take authority over it and you say, by the blood of Jesus and in the power of his name and the authority I have been given, I take authority over every lethal molecule that is in this. It has, I, I bind it. It is, it is no longer valid and this water is pure and safe to drink. You take that God gave us this authority. He gave us the authority over the power of the enemy. He gave us the authority to bind and to loose. And folks, it, it, it's now. The church has got to step up. The remnant has got to step up. Now is also a time to be wise. Let's go to uh, water. Pardon? I have a 150 foot well that's always clean. That's, that's, um, uh, remember that. I, I will. Okay. Um, Hebrews 11.7. By, by faith, by faith, being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear, he prepared an ark to save his house. Y'all have been in this class for how many, how many months now? And he has warned us and warned us and warned us and warned us and warned us. You need to be prepared. You need to have some silver and gold invested. You need to have some cash on hand. You need to have some extra food. He can multiply whatever you've got. You need to have some water on hand. 
We don't know what all they've got up their sleeve, but we have the trump card. And I saw that is that is a really bad pun. But <laughs> Donald Trump is not our savior, but the Lord has anointed this man. He has chosen him. Um, I'm not I'm I'm not a, a huge fan of Mr. Trump. Um, I love what he does. I love the results of Mr. Trump. Um, but Sandy L'Oreal, I love you, but he is a brazen New Yorker without a filter, okay? <laughs> um, I want y'all to, I, I want y'all to go home and I want y'all to start praying. Quit praying, oh Lord, please. I want you to go home and I want you to call stuff forth. I want you to say, you know, um, we call forth the spirit of betrayal to go into the enemy's camp. We call forth the whistleblowers to come forth. We call forth the Microsoft servers to be exposed. We call forth Michael to go and to destroy the army of, of the of the our Iranians and to set that church free. Um, just call it forth. Speak it. Um, our cell phone service will not be hindered. Uh, regardless of what they try and stop our communication, because trust me, when the truth comes out, they will shut down everything they can to keep it from going forth. And um, let me let me read. Uh, uh, let me go to uh, Timothy, Second Timothy. I'm gonna talk about this, and I'll quit. For the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I don't know how many of y'all were at my house during COVID, and um, uh, Judy Hicks had invited this this beautiful young lady to come, and she came in my back door with a mask on, and I very lovingly told her, I said, I am so glad you're here. I said, but um, you can't wear that in my house. And she said, she was about 30-something. She said, oh, I, I I don't wear it to protect myself. I wear it to protect others. I said, we don't need your protection, do I? I said, so I'm going to have to ask you to take it off or leave. Mm -hmm. And she started weeping. Mm -hmm. the, she spirit, fear. the spirit of fear had a death grip on her. And we lost a lot of people when I wouldn't let them wear a mask to class. You have been given a spirit of a sound mind. You have been given a spirit of peace. Do not, I don't care what the enemy is going to throw at us. Do not fear. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, we thank you for your word because we're standing on it. And we thank you that you warned Noah. And we thank you that you warned Joseph in a dream to take the baby and to go to, to Egypt. We thank you that you warned the wise men, don't go back the way you went. Father, you have warned us, you have told us, and we trust you. And whatever the enemy brings no weapon formed against us will stand your church will be victorious your church will go and have we're going to have evangelism in the streets lord we thank you for that that praise that broke out in Paris, Lord, after after they mocked you, and you will not be mocked. Father, I ask that you would please forgive these people. Please forgive these people on this Olympic committee that, that created all that to mock you, Lord. Show them who you are. Show them that you are the God of love. Everyone that was involved in that, Lord, we lift them up to you. 
and I believe with every fiber of my being that, that girl that goes by the name of Barbara Butch is going to come up to me on the streets of gold and she's going to say, your group prayed for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for the faith that you have given us. And Lord, I ask you right now that you send us out of that door in the spirit of Elijah. And as always, Lord, we ask that every word spoken and every prayer prayed be absorbed into the walls of this facility and echo into the hearts of the men and women that come here. We ask these things in the most precious name of all names, the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Sar Shalom. Amen. Uh.